see me, you Stevie. Wondering how I reach more evolutions than Eevee and make it look easy. What is up, Earth's Mighty and subscribers? It's Blur Without Fear. Welcome back to the channel. All right, today's video, I'm gonna be talking about Miles Morales Spider-Man number five by Cody Ziegler and Federico Vizentini. And what I specifically wanna focus on is Miles Morales' new villain, Rabble, and her origins and why she may be much more than what we initially thought, as well as a new addition to Miles Morales' power set that is gonna change the character forever. First and foremost, let's talk about Raneem Rashad, AKA Rabble. The character is something that is a bit of an anomaly. And I say that because she is a character who was displaced by Miles Morales winning the Visions lottery that gained him access to better educational opportunities and pretty much left Raneem out in the cold. These were all things we pretty much knew from the first issue, or at the very least, could guess at. And Renine took that as a slight, a personal slight, not just from the system that did displace her, but also she took it as a slight for Miles Morales, even though the two had never met. And she made it her life's mission to get revenge on Miles Morales, and more specifically, destroy everything around him kill everyone that he loves and there you go that fixes everything and now i definitely want to point out and i have seen people criticize this online that rabble's motivations are very short-sighted and that is why i feel like she is more of a traditional villain as opposed to a villain that you would want to relate to that this is a person who is dealing with some frustrations and angers she is grossly misdirecting that anger and frustration at someone who honestly doesn't even deserve her ire. She should be directing her attention toward the system itself, directed at the Vision Academy. But the trick of the matter is, is that she does direct that anger at the Vision Academy. She just wants to take out Miles first and foremost. It's one of those deals where you're not supposed to root for Rabble to win. And if you do, I think you have a bigger problem, but I'm not here to judge. That said, it is brought up by more than just Miles Morales in this comic, Rabble, is focusing her anger in the wrong direction. And that while Miles apologizes for the things that she feels, the slights that she feels she has faced in the wake of not only growing up to lose her mother, but also to see her father just completely broken by the loss of her mother and then losing out, potentially getting a better education and better opportunities to help her family in their you know, time of need when they're struggling with money and struggling with trying to keep a roof over their head. It's one of those deals where yeah that's kind of the point she's angry she's supposed to be angry and if rabble actually directed that anger in the proper direction then she would probably not be a villain she'd more likely be at the very least an anti-hero but that's not who rabble is she is very much a villain in all of this she is willing to not just harm miles morales's you know, best friend Ganky or his love interest Starling. She's actually willing to go as far as to attempt to murder Miles Morales's parents, Rio and Jefferson, as well as Miles Morales' baby sister, Billy. Now, on a side note about Renine, AKA Rabble, we learn over the course of the series that Rabble might just be a mutant. Now, this also kind of factors into why she's able to do a lot of the things that she's able to do. While initially it was described that she she was a very intelligent person who was really handy as an engineer, very talented and gifted in that field. It actually turns out that it was more than just that. She mentions over the course of the series that she was able to create her first automaton before she could either walk or talk. And as a small infant, she was already ridiculously intelligent. And it's another deal we learn in issue number three that she's also able to communicate with technology and not just in the you know, metaphorical sense that she just really understands tech. No, she does actually talk to technology. She can communicate with data and just about any form of technology and understand what it says back to her, meaning that she's a technopath. Now, to be a technopath, that would imply you have some level of superhuman capability. It's not something that just people have. And we also never get any kind of inkling that she suffered some kind of outside stimulus or any kind of chemical reaction that would have given her this capability. It seems like it was something she was just born able to do. And that the death of her mother had triggered her ability to fully communicate with technology as it's shown that when her mother dies, that's when it all kind of seems to click for her. So it's very likely that by the rules of the Marvel Comics universe, 
she would be a mutant because mutants are born with their capabilities. And while they don't always require a uh, traumatic event, any kind of outside stimulus to trigger those latent mutant abilities, sometimes it does help. Now, once again, it's never explicitly stated that she's a mutant, but just based on the evidence, that's what we're gonna go with. Now, on the other side of things that I wanted to talk about is what's going on with Miles Morales's powers. Because in the fifth issue, Miles does something that we've never seen him do before. One of the things that has always set Miles Morales apart from Peter Parker's version of Spider-Man is, well, for one, Miles can turn invisible, but the other aspect of his power set that is completely different from Peter Parker is that he can generate bioelectricity, and he can even project it at other people at short range, and sometimes even medium range, depending on who the writer is at the time. Over the course of Miles' publication history, he's been able to channel that bioelectricity, what he often calls his venom blast. He's been able to channel those into very different types of things. He's been able to channel them into methods of launching himself into the air so that he can get more hang time. With his web swinging, he's also been able to generate threads of electricity, no differently than he would a spider's web. But in Miles Morales' Spider-Man number five, he does something incredibly new with those Venom Blasts, and it's his new ability to create hard light constructs. In this issue, while Rabble is able to generate electrical weapons like swords and scythes that she uses against Starling, as well as Miles Morales and Misty Knight, in this issue, Miles copies Rabble's ability. Whereas she's swinging at him with an electrical scythe, Miles is able to create a sword out of his bioelectricity. One that is capable of not only hurting Rabble, but is also able to generate enough density to also be used effectively as a defensive weapon. This is a huge deal because Miles has never done anything like this before. The Spinnerets was kind of like a precursor to this, but this is something incredibly bigger than just the spinnerets. The spinnerets worked very similarly to hard light constructs in that he could use them to you know, web swing no differently than he would with his normal web shooters, but this is the next level of that. And while this doesn't exactly put him on even footing with the character he was inspired from, which is Milestone Media's Static, it does put him a little bit closer. I'll go and tell you right now, Milestone Media Static would wipe the floor with Miles Morales, at least in terms of electric manipulation and control. However, as I always like to say when people bring up the who would beat who in a fight conversation, I honestly think Miles and Static would just have more of a chit chat or talk as opposed to actually throwing hands with one another because not every superhero has to dislike one another because they're similar. But yeah, this is a huge deal for Miles Morales and I can't wait to see what else he is able to do with this new power set. And I feel like this is definitely gonna set him even further apart from the comparisons between himself and Peter Parker's version, Spider-Man. All in all, this new relaunched Miles Morales Spider-Man series is really good. If I'm being brutally honest, I feel like you don't even really have to know anything about the previous storylines or runs of Miles Morales to even understand what's going on here. I feel like even if you're a casual who only knows about Miles Morales because of the Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse movie, I feel like even if you only had that information to run with, you could easily sit down with this comic and completely get everything that's going on here. Though I will definitely say having some history with Miles Morales definitely makes it an even more effortless read. But anyways, that's everything I want to talk about with Miles Morales. Spider-Man number five. If you enjoyed this video, do the YouTube thing, like, share, comment, subscribe, and make sure to tap that notification bell so you don't miss out on any videos that I put out. We just recently passed 80,000 subscribers on our road to 100K in 2023. So shout out to everyone who's been hitting that subscribe button and sharing and liking the videos and all that good stuff. Also shout out to everyone who was already subscribed and shout out to everyone who's about to. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. And until next time, let me know what you thought about Miles Morales, Spider-Man number five. How do you feel about the new villain Rabble? And what do you think about Miles Morales' new powers? Keep it plus ultra and sound off in the comments.